Hi there, uh, Louis here. Um, I talked to Bob about some stuff in Lightfair and he suggested me that if I have some time to read this topic and uh, Delta is asking about how to get tire weight on the model to look like realistic, like heavy car is sitting on the tire, which happens with normal cars also. So. Here's uh, one of ways. I'm sure there is a lot of ways to do it, but uh, I'll show you one in 11.5. Although I think this this can work in 9 and above, maybe even earlier. So like with 9, 10, 11, I think it will work in any version. So let's. I already created model. It's nothing great. It's just the tire. I just wanted to have a little more geometry. Uh, so it's not really low poly stuff. This is not high poly, but when you hit tab key, yeah, no, now it's going to be fine. So it's going to have enough poly. Save object. I already renamed it tire squash squash model. And uh, let me add another thing. Go to source editor and let's check first. You need to switch to. GLSS shaders so you can see procedural textures here and I just want to add some procedural on this and later is going to be much much uh, more uh, understandable why I'm doing this so let's try something like that. okay uh, something like this bump array procedural so now we have some crazy looking tire this is just visual so we can see it better so now save the tire save the mesh and switch to start layout save the tire and switch to layout empty scene so now Add uh, the tire squash, squash, whatever you call it, and that's our tire. Now add the null object now and place it here. So see if you can see the tire is sitting. The, the null is at zero 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 world position and the tire is a little bit above. So I'll move it here. Oh yeah, also uh, make sure that the tire has a pivot in the center if you plan to rotate it. So yeah, that's center pivot command in model. So let's do it like this. So it sits like a few centimeters into the ground. And now what? what's next? See now, next is to save the scene. Tire squashing blah 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 okay and currently nothing happened but so you go to tire model open the property panel and go to deform tile add displacement go go to texture displacement and open up the panel so now also just remember one thing if nothing happens when you're working on try to refresh uh, sometimes it doesn't refresh uh, the value you, are, you add. So, and go switch to epsilon, uh, switch layer, layer type to procedural. See now something happened. Yeah, and our tire looks like in car crash. <laughs> but search for the um, procedural called value. And everything here is okay, 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 and I think. And to the fell off, you switch to fell off and switch to linear epsilon, and then go to position and slide your tire like minus one meter, something like that. And now you need to refresh. And first of all, don't forget to click this. I often forget world coordinate so yeah that, that's important and the reference object is a null reference object null now try to reverse oh, nothing happened now 
uh, move this tire down use it like this and move it more like that go to fell off and turn to 100% and actually undo this movement and just uh, so I, I did undo movement you don't need the moment so you just need to go to fell off and do 100% and as you can see, our tire is squashed, squashed on, the, on the bottom now. See, it's really, really nicely squashed. And because it references this null, okay, I don't want to remove it. I don't know why, why did I click this? But basically now this tire is squashed on this zero position. And it looks really good. So, uh, what's next? This scale position, uh, bit position you adjust, say this. You can adjust how much squash you want. In my case, I think one meter is good. That actually depends on the size of your tire, so you'll have to improvise a little bit to find the right amount. And also depends on where your tire is sitting, see. Now, if you want less, squashing then you just increase uh, the value of the epsilon axis of the tire and let's say this I'm happy with this now this section looks pretty much there and this must work in light with 10 11 and 9 whatever so now what's the next thing and the real tire let me switch to headlights so we can see it better uh, it's a little too much, but okay. Uh, real tire, when you squash it like this, I'll turn it off anyway. I don't like it. <laughs> when you squash it like this, it uh, gets a bulge here. It's not just squashed like now. You need to have some kind of bulging on the sides because the old weight from this just goes on the side. So what's next? Copy this, paste to add layers and drag that layer down because it adds on the top and then switch to Z. Null object is same, scale is same, fell off and switch this to spherical. And I'll add all the fellows. See the tire got some squash here. Uh, let's switch to minus axis because that's this side we don't see. Uh, it was minus point, I don't know, 25. Uh, that's kind of better. Let's check. Let's go here to check what's happened. Minus 25, that's fine. Now we need position in Z axis. See something happens when you do this. Uh, watch this right view. When you move it, something changes. And that's what we want, like minus 0.2. And now move this epsilon, see, to adjust like five centimeters deep down. Because with epsilon, it's one meter. So now you are. See when you switch here, it's one meter. And that's that's fine. Now this is in z, z axis. It's not in epsilon anymore. This is in z. Value is minus 0.25. If you add more, you'll get this. That's not really looking fine. Minus 25. That's that's fine. And this uh, value, if you add back to minus one, will eliminate eliminate this, so you don't have anything. So you need. To go back a little bit if you go too much you'll get this so like this go five centimeters is enough and you see here how nicely is bulging here and that's what we wanted so now you can still play with fellows see you get something like less bulging on on this if you put zero fell off then you have more and same goes to uh, Z, but it pulls the other side. We don't want that. So, uh, in my opinion, this 100 works for all axes. And now position. And now we have one side. Uh, we have epsilon, like 
this axis on the top and one side. We don't have the other, other side. It's actually if you are doing car, only this side is really important to see it because you probably won't see the interior side, but for sake of making this realistic, let's copy this. Paste, add two layers, now drag it down here. And now what you need to do is to switch the values. Go here in the plus and go here in the plus. See now both sides have spherical um, bulge on the side. And that really looks good. So that's, let's save this just for the sake so that we don't lose it if you have some crash. Now, God forbid. <laughs> Now let's move this tire like we have 120 frames and move it here, or like there. And uh, let's rotate in minus 180 in the bank. So now our tire is moving, and that's what you really want in the car. And now it looks like we are done, but now. Uh, you see the problem. See this nicely bulged and squashed, but if I move the tire, it's still squashed in the epsilon because the uh, pivot, uh, because the reference object is just in epsilon. So if this is at zero, he is going to squash it anyway. But the side bulge is gone because we cross over this. Uh, a null object and now it's not really using it anymore for the side bulges so it rotates see now I, I think now it's clear why I use this procedural because if you don't use it let's try switch to just multi texture now see you don't see the procedurals now it's really hard to see that it's rotating unless you use the wireframe which is really dense so it's not great so that's the only reason why I did uh, that silly texture on it. So, how to solve this? Uh, I'll show you how not to solve now first. If you go to null object and you think, okay, I'll just parent the null to the tire and that should work. But no, see what happens? The null gets rotated with, <laughs> with the tire and we have a bulge on top of this, which really looks weird because it's pushing everything, so our tire looks bad. <laughs> so that's not gonna work. If you need the steel, steel shot render, you are done. But in this case, so this parenting is not working. And, and yeah, this is new in, in Lightweight 11.5. In old Lightweight, you need to go to this and put the none in 11.5, just hit this X mark and Arm parenting, so that's cool feature. Thank you guys from your tech. So how to make this thing go along but doesn't rotate? Well, you go to null object properties and go to actually go to motion properties and add modifier called uh, follower. So yeah, the name explains it everything. And now double click and item to follow is the tire squash. Click on work coordinates. And now it looks like it's done, but it's not. But I will show you what you need to do. If you hit continue now, <laughs> you get this. And that's really not a great example. So double click, open this, and now go to heading angle, none. Pitch none. Bank none everything set to none like this except all these positions but for epsilon position you need to set multiply to zero because you don't want to multiply its position by anything and when you hit continue now see what you have the the, the null follows the tire and we have both bulges and they look fine see you can even animate this now if you want a bigger bulge. Let's say you run on the rock and your tire hits the rock. So you need like this. 
see now I did animate this one it didn't really do much but if you push it up you can change the bulging and everything like that so it's not really that important but it's doable so you can animate the how big the bulge is going to be and you have the texture displacement you can do it here with envelope and everything like that so that's really nice but uh, basically I think that's it that's the short tutorial and I hope you understand it it's not really for full beginners but on slow speed and replay you could follow it even if you are just the beginner if you know the shortcuts for the properties and motion options and like that and that concludes this tutorial for the foundation 3d and all you guys there and the girls bye bye